All right, so we've done enough preparation work. It's time to start writing code now. We are gonna be doing the first part of our application development, which is to load data into our database. All right, so we have this Cassandra instance that we created earlier, and it is an empty database right now, okay? What we wanna do is get data from the OpenReads data dump and then populate it over here. There are a couple of ways in which you can do this. So the uh, DataStacks instance, offers this uh, load data functionality, okay? So this allows you to load your own data set at the beginning uh, with CSV files, okay? So this was something that I was considering, but then if you look at the data that's available from uh, the Open Library API, the data dump that they provide, so if you go over here to data dumps, uh, there is a bulk download option, right? So, um, if you go to the open library data dumps and then you download these, what you get is not a CSV file. What you get is kind of a, a JSON data with tab separation. It's a little weird, so let me explain. So here is my uh, files that I've downloaded over here, okay? So this is uh, something that I downloaded recently. There are uh, four files here. Two of them are zip files, okay? So there's one dump for the author that, that I downloaded and one dump for uh, the works that I've downloaded, all right? So these two are the zip files, I've extracted them, and now here are the files themselves, okay? So there's works file, which is around, around 13 gigs, right? 12.84 gigs, and then there is the author's file, which is around three gigs, okay? So these are big files. It's okay, as long as they're CSV files, I think you could still, um, Upload them to DataStax Astra directly using the, uh, you know, the import data feature, whatever that's called. Uh, yeah, upload data loader feature, right? So we cannot do this because the format is different. Let me show you. I'm gonna open terminal. And then uh, here are the files. So if I were to open, let's say I open the author's file, okay? I'm gonna open this in VI because uh, VI does well with large files. Uh, don't bother opening such large files in something like Notepad or Texted, it's gonna take a long time, okay? So I'm gonna open this in VI. Uh, for a file that is of size uh, two gigs or three gigs, look how fast VI does this. It's super efficient. So um, I'm gonna expand this thing here and let's see if we can, um, we can increase this. So what you have here, if you were to take just a couple of file, a couple of lines, okay? I'm just gonna take these lines. Let me actually copy all the way till here. Okay, all the way till here. And I'm gonna copy, and then I'm gonna open this in Visual Studio Code, paste it here. You see, this is the format that we have over here, okay? So this is uh, one line in that file that we've downloaded, okay? So you have type slash author, which is a type of that file, okay, everything here is author, so this is basically redundant data. Uh, it has the URL kind of authors slash the author ID, okay? And then I think this is the uh, the version, the revision, how many times has it been updated? When was this last updated, okay? And then here is the actual data, all right, you see this? This is JSON, all right, this data is JSON. It has a name, personal name, I'm guessing name is something like your pen name. Most of the times it's the same as personal name, but there are you know there are authors where it could be different. So you have name, personal name, last modified, and then uh, the key, type, all right? So for some authors, it also has birth date, death date, okay, interesting. So we can, we can save all that information and kind of make that available in our app, okay? Now, this is the data that is in the author's dump, okay? Um, the other one, let me quit this and then open the works dump. This is probably gonna take much more time to load because this is like, 20 gigs of data, so it's a large amount of data. But basically you get the idea, right? It's the works file is also gonna be something like this, right? You have tab limited data, tab delimited data, but then all you care about is just this JSON, right? I don't wanna deal with the other stuff before this JSON. So I'm essentially looking at uh, every line. I'm interested in every line starting from this first curly brace. So I can 
get this file, look at each line, kind of convert it into a JSON blob, and then uh, create a table out of it, and then save it, like create a row for a table out of it, and then save it to uh, Cassandra, right? This is possible. Now here is the works file, all right? So again, I'm gonna copy a bunch of lines and then paste it here. Okay, so this is the works file. And again, as you can see, this is uh, kind of tab delimited with the versioning and all that stuff, which we really don't care about. All we care about is the final version, the current version. And then now here you see, this is the JSON blob. Okay, each line has a JSON about that work. Now, if I were to take this one line, right, let me take this one line and then create a new file here, right, which is going to be JSON, and then paste this here, and then I format it. So, this is our JSON object that you get for each line, right? So, you have the title, which is interesting. You have covers, which is an array of numbers, okay? So this is referencing to uh, a cover image that you can get from Open Library. You have the key here again, it's, it's repeating here. Uh, you have the authors, which is basically an object which contains the author ID, okay? So we have the author ID from the author dump, we can reference this over here. Uh, you have the type, which is work. Again, we are getting the works data term. So everything here is gonna be of type work, as opposed to editions, which is like multiple editions of the same work or the same book, okay? You have subjects. I'm probably not gonna do subjects. I might add it, I don't know, not so interesting, to be honest. Uh, we have created, last modified, okay? So this doesn't have description. I'm guessing some of them have description and some of them don't. So um, I'm pretty sure description is available. I think it just depends on the book. Some books have it and some books don't. Fair enough. I'm hoping the popular ones have it because this is literally every book ever published, right? So there are there are books which don't have that data, which makes sense. So here is our data dump. We have authors and we have works. What we're gonna do now is build an app which parses this file, gets this information in every line, and then posts it to Cassandra, okay? To our Cassandra instance, which is over here, right? This is our data stacks Cassandra instance. Now, I talked about how there are multiple ways we can do this, right? I can create a simple Java application which does this. I can create like a, a shell script which does this. There's a whole lot of possibilities here. What I am gonna be doing though is creating a Spring Boot app because I will need to figure out the settings to connect the Spring Boot app to this database anyway, okay? I need to figure out how to connect it because we're gonna be building a web application which connects to this thing to serve this data, right? So I need to figure that out anyway. And I'm also gonna be creating entities anyway, right? I'm gonna be creating these uh, model classes which map to this. I'm gonna be doing all that work. Well, why not use that and kind of get, that, get things started with, with this app? So I'm gonna be creating a Spring Boot app with Spring Data Cassandra, which I'm gonna be using to post these data elements, these records, to this Cassandra instance, all right? So I'm gonna do that. Uh, how do I do that? Well, I go to start.spring.io and create a Spring Boot instance. That's how we get started, all right? Or I can do this in uh, Visual Studio Code directly, all right? So the way to do that is, of course, to have the right extensions. So make sure you have the Spring Spring extension pack, okay? So you have Spring Boot extension pack, really. So this is a bunch of extensions which allow you to create Spring Boot applications directly from Visual Studio Code. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code for this. You can use anything else you want. You can use uh, IntelliJ, it's perfectly fine. We are not gonna be using a lot of IDE features for this, okay? We're gonna be writing code as Java files and we're gonna be running a main method, right? Most IDEs allow you to run a main method in Java, so it really doesn't matter. I just happen to use Visual Studio Code for this one, okay? So if you're using Visual Studio Code, you're gonna to have to install the Spring Boot extension pack, which is what I'm doing now, right? I'm gonna click install. So it's gonna install this extension pack, which is all the, um, all the stuff that you need. I'm also gonna install the Java extension pack, 
So I have all the Java stuff as well. Okay. All right, bunch of uh, welcome files, which I'm gonna close. All right, this stuff is handy. I'm gonna keep it here. This one I'm gonna close. Don't wanna save it. Once these uh, extensions are installed, I'm going to start a new Spring Boot project. And I do that by using, okay, I might have to restart the, I have to restart Visual Studio Code for this to work. Let me do that. Okay, now I'm going to start a Spring Boot project. Spring initializer, create a new Maven project. I do this by using the command Shift P shortcut or the Control Shift P shortcut. It brings up the command palette and then I type Spring and I'm gonna get all the options for Spring. This is how uh, Visual Studio Code works, by the way. It has this concept of a command palette and then you can get all the commands. Uh, you can type the commands and have it available over here and you can pick one, all right? I'm gonna pick create a Maven project, all right? Now, what it's gonna do is ask me to choose what version of Maven, uh, what version of Spring Boot I need, right? Say specify Spring Boot version. I'm going to choose the latest version, latest stable version. Uh, the project language is gonna be Java and then my coordinates. Okay, and the artifact ID is gonna be better reads data loader, right? This is not gonna be the main application. This is gonna be the app which loads data into my Cassandra instance. So I'm calling this better reads data loader. And I'm gonna make this one word. All right, better reads data loader. And uh, I want this to be a jar. Java version 11 is good. And now I get to choose the dependencies for my project. Okay, what are the dependencies that I need? I'm gonna choose DevTools. And uh, I don't need Spring Web because it's not gonna be a web application. I am going to choose um, Spring Data Cassandra, okay? Not Spring Data JPA because this is gonna be Cassandra. All right, so here it is. Spring Data for Apache Cassandra. Spring Data Reactive for Apache Cassandra. So there are two flavors. The Reactive has the Reactive API style of coding. Not gonna be doing Reactive now because um, people are not fully aware of Reactive. I might do Reactive as a separate course or a separate project, but I wanna keep things simple so that it addresses people who both know and don't know Reactive. We're gonna do this in a non-reactive fashion. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is during this coding session, I'm gonna call out places where Reactive actually helps, okay? Where I think, you know, it would have been good if we had done Reactive. I can already sense that. Uh, I'm gonna hit certain points there uh, because Reactive is pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna choose Spring Data for Apache Cassandra, no Reactive, right? Hit enter, so I have two uh, dependencies here, all right? I have the Spring Boot DevTools and Spring Data for Apache Cassandra. Do I need anything else? I probably don't. I just need to read this file, stream this file, take each line one by one, and then persist it to Spring, uh, you know, data APIs to go to Apache Cassandra instance on data stacks. This should be good. I'm gonna hit enter to continue. Now it's gonna ask me, where do you want this to be saved? I'm gonna create a new folder called code. And in the, inside that, I'm gonna create a folder called better reads and then I'm going to generate to this folder okay so it's going to create this over there and now it's going to ask me do you want me to open this guy right do you want me to open this file all right so I'm going to click on open and uh, oh, I'm going to lose the changes that's fine don't save it I don't need that we can figure this out later all right, do you trust the authors of the files in this folder? Yeah, I trust the authors of the files in the folder better reads. I particularly like that author. I think he's an amazing uh, coder, don't you think? I think so. All right, so here I have the uh, project here, which is the bare bones spring boot project. Nothing really fancy here. It's just one Java file, which you can run. All right, 
and then there is one test file which I can run. Test file doesn't do anything. We're not going to be doing testing here, at least for the scope of this video series. So I'm going to focus on this file. Okay. This one does nothing right now. Okay. There is nothing here which acts as um, kind of like when I run this thing, there's nothing that happens. So for example, if I had a web dependency, running this would probably start a web application. Okay. If I had uh, a Spring security dependency, running this would probably start the Spring security filters and all that. So right now I don't have any of those dependencies. I have Spring Data Cassandra dependency. So when I run this, it's going to try and connect to a Cassandra instance, which is not going to work. So this is basically, um, you know, you're not, you're not going to get anything useful when you run this thing. All right. So if I run this, uh, notice what happens. I get an error, right? What's this error? The error says, You see this? Failed to instantiate the Cassandra session bean because all nodes failed, right? Couldn't connect to e even one of the possible nodes in the Cassandra instance. Why? Because we don't have a Cassandra instance. There are no nodes available, okay? It's trying to connect to the nodes because Cassandra is a distributed database. It's like if, if one of the nodes it tries to connect to fails, it's like, okay, maybe that one node is down. Let me try connect to an connecting to another node. Well, it's Right now it's reporting like none of the nodes are working, dude. So yeah, I get it. We don't have a Cassandra instance. By default, Spring Data Cassandra tries to connect to a local Cassandra instance, right? I forget what the local uh, port is that Cassandra runs. If you download Cassandra and run it locally, it, it kind of has a default port. So it tries to connect to that default port and uh, kind of assumes local Cassandra because we haven't configured anything else, right? What we need to do is we need to tell Spring Data Cassandra to connect to which instance? To this instance, right? To our Bitter Reads database that we have set up on the cloud. It's a hosted instance. We're gonna have to connect to that, right?